In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this great feast of the Most Holy Trinity, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, ask now about former ages long before your own, ever since the day that God created man on the earth. 
ask from one end of heaven to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has its like ever been heard of? Has any people ever heard the voice of a God speaking out of a fire, as we have heard and lived? Or has any God ever attempted to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation? By trials, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by terrifying displays of power, as the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. So acknowledge today and take to heart that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. There is no other. Keep his statutes and his commandments which I am commanding you today for your own well-being and that of your descendants after you, so that you may long remain in the land that the Lord your God is giving you for all time. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his steadfast love of the Lord. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made and all their host by the breath of his mouth. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his to keep them alive in famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption to sonship. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. After returning a uh, rather dismal set of exams in our Trinity course in the seminary, the professor who was teaching the course said to us, gentlemen, for many of you, the best thing you can probably do on Trinity Sunday for a homily is make the sign of the cross and sit down before you confuse the matter. I'm not going to do that, unfortunately. And Bishop Barron uh, frequently on uh, Trinity Sunday says that Trinity Sunday is so often a preacher's nightmare, but then he goes on to say that it ought not be. And he's right, it ought not be. Because while the Trinity 
is definitely a great mystery. It is the fundamental and central mystery of our faith, one God in three divine persons. It is also a mystery that is so expansive, so beautiful, that any one little aspect of it gives a preacher ample opportunity to come up with, with something worthwhile to say. I hope. Today's gospel is just such an example. Jesus says to his assembled disciples, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, one might wonder at first what baptism has to do with the Holy Trinity. Why would we talk about baptism on Trinity Sunday? And the simple answer is that baptism has everything to do with the Holy Trinity. There is good reason that Jesus commanded that we baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and not just baptize in the name of God or baptize in the name of Jesus or any other way that a baptism may be done. No, we baptize quite specifically in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see, baptism, the original sacrament, which opens us up to all of the other sacraments, which opens us up to the, what we call the life of grace, has a number of different effects. Its first effect is to wash away all stain of original sin, and in an adult, to wash away not just original sin, but actual sins as well. Very frequently when I've been preparing people for the sacraments of initiation at Easter, those who have already been baptized and, uh, and are being received into the Catholic Church become rather envious of those who are to be baptized because they don't have to go to confession. All of their sins are going to be washed away in baptism. Now, of course, they have to go to confession later. But it washes away original sin. Baptism also makes us members of the church. You know, if you, one were to say, you know, what is a Christian? Well, we can give all kinds of answers as to, oh, a Christian is someone who does this or who believes that or any of the other thing, but ultimately a Christian is one who has been baptized, one who has been conformed to Christ in baptism, one who has been made a member of the mystical body of Christ. One of the main effects of baptism is the giving of sanctifying grace. Sanctifying grace. To sanctify means to make something holy. And yet in the scriptures we are told that only God himself is holy. And therefore to be made holy can only be done by God and it must mean that in some way we are conformed to God in baptism and indeed we are because we refer to sanctifying grace and grace is God sharing his very life with us in baptism we are incorporated into the very life of and what is that life? Well, the life of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is ultimately love. St. John, in, I believe it's in his second letter, says, God is love. He doesn't say God loves. He doesn't say that love is something that God does. He says God is love. Love is what God is. And in that, we get a very beautiful understanding of the Trinity. In order for there to be love, there must be a lover, there must be the beloved, and the love that is between them. The Father is the eternal lover. The Son is the eternal beloved, begotten, not created, as we are going to say in just a few moments. And the Holy Spirit is that living love 
that eternally exists between the Father and the Son. A love that is so powerful, so overflowing, that God desires that there be someone else with whom he can share that love. And if that love is his life, then he desires that there be other with whom he can share his very life. Us. Through no merit of our own, but simply by the waters of baptism, by that sanctifying grace, we receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which incorporates us into that love of God. Not a bad thing to, to contemplate on this Trinity Sunday. That each and every one of us here, by virtue of our baptism, share in the very life of God. Now, yes, by sin, we can tarnish that life. We can tarnish the imago, the imago Dei, the image of God within us. By mortal sin, we can break off that relationship. God, in his grace, then always desires us that we come back, that we be reconciled with him. That that life, his life within us, be reformed, be reconciled. And he desires that one day, what he begins at baptism will reach its full flowering in heaven. Now we who by baptism are incorporated into Christ, who are made members of his mystical body, who have a sharing in the life of the Trinity, are ultimately called to full union with God, to the fullness of sharing that life of God, forever in the kingdom of heaven. We are created in love, in the love of the Trinity. By baptism, that love comes to dwell right within us in the person of that divine love, the Holy Spirit. And what begins at baptism is called to reach its fulfillment in our eternal sharing in that love in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, there is good reason that we baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Not just because Jesus told us to, but Jesus told us to because he wanted us to know that by our baptism, we share in the very life of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May God bless you all. We profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Having heard the word of God in faith, let us now call upon God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to hear our prayers and petitions that our loving Father will help the Church throughout the world to grow in the life of the Blessed Trinity through our partaking in this Eucharistic sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit, the Counselor and Consoler, will remove fear and doubt from the hearts and minds of all people and fill them with the love and peace which He alone can give. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. The God will guide all civil authorities and law enforcement officials to establish justice and peace for all people and uphold the inherent dignity of each person, especially the unborn and the elderly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, will establish true and lasting peace in our world, and that he will comfort those affected by warfare, tyranny, or oppression. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the Good Shepherd will grant the leaders of our Church grace and wisdom, and we ask that he continue to bless His Excellency Bishop Yastrecki as he celebrates the 65th anniversary of his priestly ordination this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the power of Christ, risen from the dead, may give comfort and healing to those who are suffering, especially the sick of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the glory of the resurrection will shine on all the faithful departed, especially the deceased members of our parish family, we pray to the Lord. The Eucharistic sacrifice is offered for the repose of the souls of Maria Jesenek, Antonio Eduardo Macado, Elizabeth Moore, Kate Robertson, and Guy and Rita Soligo, and for the intentions of His Excellency Bishop Yastricki, we pray that our Blessed Lady, the beloved Daughter of the Eternal Father, the Mother of the Son of God, and the Spouse of the Holy Spirit, will join her prayers to ours as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. But in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by the angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and, recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Bartholomew, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world, who are departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of notices this evening. Uh, first and foremost, uh, what a pleasure to have the choir of St. Clement's Cambridge, or perhaps I should say St. Clement's Preston, uh, here with us this evening. You are, yes, please. You are very, very welcome at the Basilica of Our Lady. It's a joy to have you, and I hope that you will come again. Uh, tickets are on sale in the South Tower entrance for our parish golf tournament. Uh, please don't procrastinate any longer if you plan on coming. Uh, we only have 10 golfers so far, and we need 40 to make the tournament happen. We have a number of things coming up this week. Uh, Thursday uh, will be our Corpus Christi procession. Mass will be at 6 o'clock in the evening followed by a procession with the Blessed Sacrament through the streets of the city, ending up at Sacred Heart Church for benediction. You are all very welcome and certainly encouraged to attend. Uh, Friday, May 31st, we will be having our May crowning celebration at 7 o'clock in the evening. That celebration will also be a, a special celebration for Bishop Eustrichi. This coming third Thursday, as you heard in the petitions, is the 65th anniversary of his priestly ordination, and we will honor that with a reception following the May crowning on Friday evening. The Diocesan Marian Days resume next Saturday. Confessions and are, will be held during the Holy Hour from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Benediction of the Blessed Sacrament at 10.15. Mass at 10.30, and then the Rosary Procession after Mass. Reminder, uh, once again, that during the month of June, all weekday Masses, Monday through Friday, will be held at 7.30 in the morning. That is to allow some work to be done above the ceiling of the Basilica. The gift shop is open in the parish hall after Mass. And this week, the lamps at the Regina Chaley Shrine burn in honor of Arthur Moser and Christina Major. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.